Hi everyone, just doing a little bit of a kind of pre-warning for this video. I filmed it quite a while ago. Um, I really wasn't happy with the results of this video. I wasn't, I do get kind of very ranty in it, which is fine. Um, but because I get, I got so frustrated with it, I just wasn't happen, happy with where I kind of went with the conclusions and always had kind of felt that I could do a better job with this video. Um, but of course, what frustrated, frustrated me about it the first time has also frustrated me um, ongoing. So it's been an ongoing frustration with this video. So I have, uh, of course, just got super frustrated with it. But um, in spite of how I feel quite dodgy about this, I will um, be posting it anyway so you will see this next up is the video uh, regarding how historical inaccuracies have happened in period care thanks hello everybody and welcome back to rebellious menstruation and another bloody tale about the misconception about the history of periods. There seems to be uh, these serious historical misconceptions, such as the idea that cave women went about the place with blood running down their thighs or their legs like it ain't no thing. If you've looked up the history of tampons, I think uh, I'll link it up here on the left if you want to see it, or the history of what women used to do, you'll find a plethora of increasingly absurd theories like the aforementioned running around with no protection on. There are also other assumptions such as periods being lighter and or only enough to smear the thighs rather than run down the legs or that these women spent most of the time pregnant, miscarrying or breastfeeding to suppress menstruation. However, there is literally no evidence to support that this happened. Aside from current medical evidence to support breastfeeding um, can actually delay ovulation or periods post-birth. It can act, this is actually specific to each individual. Therefore, a 12 to 18 month breastfeeding gap is not actually accurate. Otherwise, we wouldn't get kids that are 12 months apart or I know, I literally know people who are 10 months apart from their siblings. So they've been born in the same calendar year. So if we if you're if you're breastfeeding suppressed your ovulation for 12 to 18 months most kids would be two to three years apart we know that this is not accurate and so your specific body requirements will generally dictate how you know fertile you are or how quickly you can become pregnant or if breastfeeding in fact reduces your ability to get pregnant at all in addition, there are no indications that um, there are indications that women did not start having children until they were approximately 19 or 20. Um, and they quite often had their first kid around 1920, their second kid about two years yet later, and their third kid about two years after that. There are indications that some women had eight to ten children, but there are also other indications that they had between three and four children. So you know, this whole mythology surrounding women have women having a plethora of children is also massively inaccurate. Also, um, there is a massive kind of mathematical issue that comes up a lot. While the average age may be written down as 25 or 30, this number is severely, severely skewed by the infant mortality rate. If you made it past 15 years old, you had a great chance of surviving till 50 plus up until your 60s. And you know, there is anthropological evidence of people in their 60s that survive, that exist now. If you're a woman, you survived past 15 and then survived your childbearing years, um, there again, there is a great indication was a great there is a great chance that you'll survive into your 50s and 60s but again the infant mortality rate severely skews, skews these responses because most of the deaths that would happen that were unexplained i.e outside of war 
work with infants under five. While anthropology is a continually developing field as we get further and further information, if you look up medieval women and menstruation and find something that says women just bled into their clothes, rest assured you found something written by a man who had no fucking idea how periods work. In addition, periods are shamed today. People are embarrassed by their periods today. This is 2021 and people are still fucking embarrassed by them. Men still have no idea. I have seen comments by men that are terrifyingly ignorant because they have never been told, explained about periods. Why would you think that the people writing the history books or the people recording the history over the last thousand couple of thousand years would have any idea about a women's issue about because their wives and their daughters would not have told them about it and would not be discussing them about it because they don't discuss it with them today the fact that people are still perpetuation perpetuating these bad historical inaccuracies including women that write on the subject who should really know better is completely and utterly ridiculous Basically, there are sources out there that would indicate that this is not the case. We do have archaeological evidence for what they used. We don't have many written documents, but we also do have written documents. The indication that women wore red petticoats, I think I have addressed this before in another video, but if you've actually ever bled onto black, onto red cloth or red clothing your blood stain shows up the only color that you would be wearing would be black because black is the only one that it would sh still show uh like a uh the like the wet stain but it would not show the blood stain red petticoats show blood stains if you don't believe me get me red on bleed on it and it will show you that red petticoats are literally not the best things to wear in these situations Quite often wool, um, it was suggested to be using, uh, you know, soaking up blood, but wool is actually itchy and it also repels moisture. Like if you, wool is actually a moisture repellent. There is evidence for underwear like garments made of seal skin with blood moss remnants. One is waterproof, the other is super absorbent so that it can be rinsed out, wrung out, rinsed of blood and wrung out. Another kind of thing that is uh, indicated a lot is that for a lot of time people didn't wear essentially what we would classify as underwear or at least in modern underwear. So for a long time people didn't wear underwear but people did wear garments that covered themselves up and people would wear garments. They did dress battle wounds and they would dress to essentially women would utilize things to actually deal with their period to think that they wouldn't is based on the fact that people didn't necessarily always wear underwear is a really ridiculous thing we know the type of things that were used um, like the seal skin and blood moss remnants because while there isn't much of anything written down regarding the use of blood moss for periods scribes wax poetic about it using battle wounds and surgeries an archaeologist discussed the seal skin find thought it was an incontinence garbage, uh, garment considering the age of the skeleton it was found attached to. But if these garments existed, it wasn't really a stretch to suggest that these are actually used for periods and not for incontinence. The design would have essentially been exactly what would have been used to address your periods. Using the skill, seal skin outer, you would have also could also place cotton into the inner lining to absorb the blood, be rinsed out, and used again. A Greek historian wrote that a woman so enraged her suitor who wouldn't leave her be that she removed her blood soaked cloth pad and flung it into his face, um, which sounds fucking hilarious. Um, Pliny, of course, wrote that women were poisoned on their periods and shouldn't be allowed anywhere outside of their home when on their courses, but he was a raving misogynist even by Roman standards. Unfortunately, a lot of modern people obviously love Pliny. 
Medieval churches preached that women were unclean, useless and suffering from Eve's sin. So of course they should be kept away from church and away from fields and livestock unless that uncleanliness um, contaminate anything or everything and send everybody insane. However, landowners with planted fields literally gave no fucks about the church's claims because they needed help, male and female, bleeding or not. Women needed the money and they could earn this by doing various tasks, bleeding or not. So bleeding out onto your clothes or bleeding down your legs would not have been conducive in any place in society because you would need to function in that society and it would not have been in any way you would not have been in any way able to live in public while you were covered in your own blood. So, <laughs> there was also an indication that medieval women who were in convents were considered holy in comparison to their non-convent brethren, brethren uh, because they tended to no longer have periods or suffering Eve's sin. Um, but however, as we all know with restrictive diets what would have happened in a convent is that they would have lived an austere lifestyle which means they would have had a strict diet and when you have a strict or severe diet and almost no body fat you will lose your period the moment these women left the convent and started eating normal healthy food it is almost as if it fixed what was happening and they got their periods back thus proving you know that your diet is massively influential in your with your period however in these times it was actually proof that women you know still had Eve sin and all of this other type of ridiculous stuff that even now they still spout but even back in these medieval times uh, medical practices still actually meant that they knew better they knew that diets actually were how they affected body fat and women's periods so there is evidence that from you know medical practitioners of the time that they would tell women who were struggling to have regular menstrual cycles to eat rich food and drink this information and these types of information just go to show how bad our historical records of periods are and how much information we still lack and know and why such ridiculous perhaps ridiculous propositions such as oh they just bled minor amounts and they only had four periods over their lifetime because they were either pregnant or breastfeeding or they just bled onto their clothes Do you know how impractical it is to bleed out everywhere when you were working or when you were out in the fields or when you were hunting or when you are doing anything that would involve not just sitting alone being buried in dirt this ridiculous preposition is also based on the fact that or on the ideology that women didn't do anything that women sat around in their mansions and had maids to do everything for them the majority of people and the majority of people in history did not live wealthy lifestyles they lived working lifestyles on a farm having um, if you're a married couple on that farm it is impractical to assume that one half of the adult people on that farm wouldn't have been doing any fucking work so women have always engaged in manual and physical work the unfortunate thing is that most of history is written by people who didn't necessarily have the experiences of women these pe these women who are or were engaged in manual and physical work had to have had some way of ensuring 
their period was managed and having period management in place. All of this would suggest that most of the history sources that we have regarding propositions that cave women wandered about bleeding onto themselves but it's okay it wasn't that much or that women bled out onto red petticoats because don't worry it wasn't that much or they must have been pregnant. The historical records that we did have also meant that wealthier women still didn't have 19 or 15 children on the way. The preposition has always been that working class had massive amounts of children and the wealthy had less amounts of children. But that would still mean that all of those women would still need to manage their period. The ridiculousness of all of these things are just so overwhelmingly stupid that it always flummoxes me that is difficult to find reliable and truthful resources when it comes to this. So thank you for watching. As usual, links will be down below. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, no matter where you are in it. And I will, of course, see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone.